Hey, Spuddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Dune Spice Wars. Today we're going to be playing a little bit of the new Conquest mode. Now, this is a mode that has come over, uh, come out over the course of the early access of this game. And specifically, I have been sponsored to do this video. Huge thank you to Shiro Games for sponsoring this video. There will be links in the description of this video if you want to check it out. There will also be links and information towards like the news of the game and checking out the new patch because the game has just launched out of early access. So if you want to check out this fantastic, really fun 4X RTS with a kind of custom campaign and multiplayer and all these really cool features, tons of factions, then go ahead and check out that link in the description. Make sure you click. It's a fantastic game. Make sure to check it out. I've been actually playing quite a bit of Dune in my free time, so I'm quite familiar with the Conquest game mode. And the really fun thing about Conquest is it takes this sort of normal RTS experience and kind of creates a little custom campaign for you, which is very, very cool. And I didn't even realize they had released House Akaz. So we're going to go ahead and try them out. I do think that House Atreides is maybe... I, I think House Carino is my favorite because I like the idea of having extra building slots, Imperial Edicts, all these stuff is really, really cool. Uh, but let's try let's try out House Akaz. Very authority based. Now, there's some really cool abilities here that are going on, but I'm going to go ahead and jump into gameplay. And we're going to play on normal difficulty. And we'll talk about these abilities as they come up over the course of the game. Let's go ahead and get started with a new conquest as House Akaz. So our base of operation is Foliage, a memorial to an ancestral forest. Our leader is Archduchess Armanda Akaz. Our path to victory is that we need to defeat House Atreides, House Harkonnen. We have to own one of eight ter territories and we also need to ally the Fremen. Now we need to complete two of these four objectives. So I think beelining to potentially defeat another faction could be a great opening move. But there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. So all three factions that are competing for Arrakis here start off with a main base. Over here, this is the central base of the Harkonnen. And this is the central base of the Atreides. This is the Polar Sink. And there is a storm traveling around the entire planet, at least this hemisphere of the planet. And here is our capital location. And we can choose to attack, I believe, any adjacent location and all that sort of stuff. But the very first thing that we're going to do is to choose a starting bonus. So we can start with Fascinating Works, which makes authority, which is like your political currency, cheaper to annex a village if you have a masterpiece in the region and in its neighbors. And it's per masterpiece. So this could be a very nice discount. Or upon killing a unit from an enemy faction, the champion produces Landsrad standing, which is like political standing, and influence, which is like political currency. This could be a really powerful combo if we go to Warlock. Or if we wanted to be even more powerful militaristically, Knight of the Windmill. We can start every game with a perfected champion knight at max level and start every game with a squire. Fascinating works, I feel like fits really nicely if we want to do a lot of expansion. The Knight of the Windmill fits really nicely if we want to do a lot of like early game fighting and start off with the most power. I feel like the Knight of the Windmill gives us the most early game power, which is something that I really value. So I kind of like the idea of starting with a Knight and a Squire here. It's kind of a cool, a cool major bonus that we will have. And that will kind of inform the direction that we we'll want to move in. Now we have things that are called, called development assets, which allow us to upgrade and get bonuses based on the improvements in the territory. So for example, if we take over the Pasty Mesa here, we'll be able to get bonus resources and stuff like that. And we can either attack a plaster basin, or we can attack the, pa the, the pasty mesa. And there is a, there's a whole bunch of mechanics going on in here, but let's go ahead and just get a game started. So the pasty mesa is a expansion mission, okay? So you get minus 60% authority cost to annex villages. You get extra authority production per allied sieges. sieges. There's no spice. We can sell authority to Choam rather than spice, and there's no sandworms. So this is very much so expand quickly. And after we take over the Pasty Mesa, we will gain one of these bonuses. Ooh, Head Start seems really powerful. Starting every mission with the first development of each tree, that makes me want to really do this. Now the secondary objective is to avoid losing units, which would gain us three development assets. It's kind of a scary moment here. What about this mission? Um, This is more of a standard competitive mission. It's got spice production, it's got everything. The objective is to own 30% of the Chome shares. We will gain sovereignty of the Placer Basin. We would get, ooh, 50% agent recruitment speed and plus five max agents 10 solari from pillaging or 10 percent authority production the agent thing seems super powerful but i'm gonna be honest with you this mission where we have to expand a lot and kind of play around with authority seems kind of an interesting mission now before we actually take this mission we have to make some decisions we have to pick our two counselors so we can take sanya ekaz for every sanctuary on the map you gain 10 solari production and minus 20 percent masterpiece 
construction costs and each masterpiece produces two solari interesting then we've got whitmore blood can name a second champion of a different type military units start with an extra experience level so this guy kind of an easy guy then we've got Alessia Ikaz, you can use Landsrad immunity on a resolution be to become uneligible and you gain three Landsrad standing upon building a masterpiece. Or we can go for Mesa Ikaz. Abandoning a village refunds 100% of the authority capture cost. Every masterpiece in a neutral village gives 3% authority production to House Ikaz and masterpieces are built faster. But I kind of really like the idea of this getting extra money from sanctuaries. And, and masterpieces producing extra salary. I don't actually know how masterpieces work. We're kind of exploring things here. We're having a fun time to, to try these things out. And then I also like the idea of just military units being slightly better, particularly on a, on a mission where the goal is to avoid units. So if I can keep those military units at a high level, that'd be good. So we need to ally Sitches. We need to sell authority. And we need to annex a bunch of places. Let's do it. Uh, so a lot of abilities of this faction are going to come into play here during this mission. Uh, and I'm going to get a chance to talk about them all. Okay, the Pasty Mesa is a nice piece of land. So before I actually start the game, I want to talk a little bit about some bonuses that are going to be relevant in this mission. So we gain plus one authority per sanctuary. And if we surround neutral villages, they become sanctuaries. So we probably want to create sanctuaries now, if possible. Villages adjacent to a sanctuary gain plus one instance of the village's traits. Going to be a really interesting move here to kind of play around with that. So let's take a look. We got started with a squire. We started with a knight, and that, this is a maximum rank knight, so he's super high level, super high health, good armor, uh, decent supply, minus 20, ooh, minus 20% damage per other Akazi non-mechanical unit. Cannot be executed if there's one Akazi non-mechanical unit. So this squire, actually, not only does he lower the armor of his opponents, making this knight do more damage, he actually gives this knight 20% more more damage resistance, which is really, really powerful. Uh, this is our main base, and this is our Ornithopter. This is our scout. We can put it on auto recon. I think it's good to recon yourself in the early game. I do have the game paused right now. When you're playing multiplayer, you won't be able to pause it. There's a whole lot of UI that we gotta talk about and a whole bunch of stuff going on here. But let me tell you, we're gonna go ahead and get started doing we're going to do a quick scan of the local area to see if we can't get a lay of the land. I think that seems like a pretty reasonable thing to do. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and recruit myself a second Ornithopter. They are fairly expensive. But I do think that it's a worthwhile thing to do because right now in the early game, we have nothing but positive income. So I'm going to go ahead and scout this zone over here. I'm going to put this guy on auto recon. There is no spice on this map. We can only sell authority to Choam. And we are selling a little bit of authority to Choam. I'm going to say sell a little less authority. I would, or sell, yeah, I want to, I want to stockpile some Choam. We don't need a huge amount of money right now. I also think I'm going to... Grab myself a Musketeer. Uh, it has an upkeep of 8 Solari, but it does have the Thunder ability, which makes the target suffer 10% extra damage. And this will make my Knight, the Knight that I have right here, just be super, super, super powerful. Um, we'll probably use these guys to take over some villages when the time comes. So we'll just let this guy auto-scout. He'll do what he has to do. So we found the town of Grimda. Should be very cheap for us to annex. So I'm going to go ahead and start sending my troops over there to conquer that anyway. And they will take a little bit of time to walk. But when they get there be quite powerful. Let's grab this musketeer and send them over there as well. The, the game is like, incredibly atmospheric. I'm a big fan of how the game plays. Oh, we've got a cache over here. So we can bargain with them. We can assign an agent to this and gain influence, or we can send our troops over there to explore it, and we will gain a random accessible development in statecraft. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to send my squire over there to investigate that. Then when my thunderer is here, we will attack the city of Grimda. And uh, our musketman will help out. So my knight should be able to tank this very, very easily. So while troops are outside your borders, they will lose supplies. And I think it depends on the exact environment they're in, the sort of, you know, if there's a storm, if there's anything like that. I'm going to take my second ornithopter. I'm going to put them on auto recon as well. I think it's usually good to get two, so you can explore around a little bit and find find stuff. Um, but this is how you expand. Typically, when you, when you're playing the some of the other houses, there are other ways you can expand. But basically, you just you walk in, you conquer it. Uh, now, we do have the option to pillage this sometimes, but I think we're going to go ahead and annex it. It'll take 0.3 of a day, and we do have troops over here annexing, uh, or rather picking up this statecraft development. And we did just unlock statecraft, so this will boost us in intelligence network by four days, which will increase the agent recruitment time by 100%. And we'll also get land Landsrad standing every time we finish a council. Don't worry about if you don't understand some of that yet. You will. So basically, over time, we will recruit agents. And so by collecting this, we will get this technology, which will double the speed at which we get agents, and we can have up to 10. So all very cool stuff. Now, in the city of Grimda, we have some choices. 
that we need to make. We have a 30% agent recruitment speed here. We have plus two intel production where the village has at least one building of each type, which seems quite powerful. Let's see here. We've got dew collectors. Hmm, a small amount of clean water. We don't need much water right now. We could build a plascrete factory, which I don't think we need. We could also build a wholesale market, which just gives us that little bit of solari production. There's also a masterpiece. Counts as two buildings for village traits. Destroying masterpieces inflicts the loss of 10 authority and 10 landsrad standing. Now, we do get some bonuses from masterpieces. If I recall correctly, our lady here for each sanctuary on the map and each masterpiece you gain 10 salary and cheaper masterpiece construction and masterpieces also produce salary so i think if we wanted to make a little bit of money and thus save ourselves a little bit of authority we could do that ah we can build a oh we can build different kinds of masterpieces now that's super interesting we could also build a research hub we need to be careful about how expensive the things are that we do, like Plasbury factories are pretty expensive. I think a wholesale market is a pretty cheap thing to just grab early. So we are going to go ahead and grab that wholesale market. We'll just pop that down there. And we're going to go ahead and recruit just a pair of militia. Now we are losing some manpower, so we'll have to work on that. We will probably build a manpower building to cover that issue. But we're going to go ahead over to... Let's see. Let's have a look at Adfear. What, what traits do you have? Statecraft building resource production plus creed factory limit. Well... I think this looks like a good enough spot to turn into a um, sanctuary. So I'm going to go ahead and head back to the capital so that we can go ahead and attack Kafka. And Kafka will allow us to surround this. At least that's the plan. I don't know exactly how the surrounding thing works. I'm kind of curious about it. Uh, but tech-wise, we may as well go for intelligence network, put a little bit of time into that, and then trigger this to resolve to instantly finish intelligent network. Network. It might be good. Ooh, 15% authority cost to annex a village and plus one water per controlled village. That seems like it would be really good. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. That authority cost reduction will stack really well with the central theme of this game, where authority acts as a currency. So I think that's going to fit us really nicely. Let's bring the squire back over to the advanced outpost and we shall continue on. I'm also going to play the game at 2x speed uh, from now on so that we can get through things a little bit quicker. Okay, we're attacking the town of Kafka. Now, the really cool thing is that this melee unit is attacking a range unit and range units typically suffer a massive penalty to damage when they're forced to fight in melee. So we should very easily clear this village. In fact, we should be very good at expanding in general. I am somewhat tempted to get another Ornithopter. They are only 300. You know, I'm going to get another Ornithopter. The faster we explore the map, the faster we can expand because this is a very authority heavy map. So in theory, we can pillage here. However, I think it's better if we annex because it's so cheap to annex on this particular map. We've investigated the settled high reg and we're able to grab ourselves 57 intel. That will be quite useful once we actually finish producing our first spy, which we are working on right now. Aha, unassigned agent. So there's quite a few different places we can assign our agent. We can assign them to other factions to learn about them. So we can assign them to the Atreides, we can assign them to the Harkonnen, we can assign them to the smugglers. And based on how long they spend here and how many agents I have assigned, we will get a certain amount of information. So, right, we would get at level one in intel, we would get uh, three intel per agent plus the unreconned borders of this faction, the production of reconned villages, and the ability to do infiltration cells, which will allow us to increase our infiltration of their faction. Then there is the category of counterintelligence, which is the ability to put agents sort of defending my faction from enemy agents that are spying on me. So if I put an agent on counterintelligence, they have a chance to spot enemy spies, they have a chance to spot enemy operations, and they have a chance to capture enemies on when they actually discovered that operation. And they also make it harder for enemies to assassinate you. We also have different sort of factions or places we can place spies. So for example, we can place them on Arrakis. Every agent placed on Arrakis will give us plus one authority, which seems pretty good because this is this whole map is about expanding and capturing the map. So authority seems quite useful, as well as a little bit of intel. And you can do operations based on what level of intel you have with not only the fa other factions, but also the, the different guilds here. So like the spacing guild, if I have a, let me see here. Yeah, if I have a level two relationship with the spacing guild, I can prepare an EMP bomb. These are like your spells, magic spells, um, which will allow me to do two, uh, hurt mechanical enemy units. The Landsrad is basically like the political organization. It uh, gives you political currency. The Choam is 
the money people and Chom Chom is one of those good ones to start with but I, I often like putting my first agent into Arrakis particularly on an expansion mission like this where you're doing a lot of like expanding into villages exploration is important all that sort of stuff uh, technology wise we have finished local dialect studies which will make it cheaper to annex villages and we get a little bit of passive water per annex village uh, 0.25 knowledge per controlled villages also seems quite good and we could also get research treaties this would allow us to scale up our capability of researching based on our expansion, which really kind of suits me. So I'm going to go for Lay of the Land because this is such an expansion heavy mission. That 0.2 knowledge per controlled village will help out quite a lot because right now we're pulling in about five knowledge and this would give me 0.5 knowledge after I've captured this place. So that'd be like a 10% knowledge increase. We've captured a new village, Kafka. I am going to eventually recruit more stuff in here. I do think I need to get a manpower building over here in Grimda. So I'm going to grab myself a recruitment office. Now this only produces three manpower. We're using a lot on all of these units. Oh, it's only because our units were regenerating. We're actually pretty good on manpower. So let's, let's play it slower than that. Let's have a look at what Zaisan has. Hmm? Solari production, 100% of water production as Solari. I think I might turn this into a sanctuary. So I'm going to go ahead and try to capture the stuff around it. So Pelnit is going to be next for me. It's only 28 authorities. Let's get going to Pelnit. And then in this city, I'm going to go ahead and just drop a single militia, just so it's not completely undefended. We have another Ornithopter. I'm going to put him onto Auto Recon. And I also see over here there's a Lost Box. I'm going to send the Squire to go acquire that Lost Box. Although, actually, we're going up against three troops this time, so I'm going to get the Squire to help out with this fight, because he does lower the armor of our opponents. And now that we've killed the main melee unit, I will send the Squire to go investigate that. The other really nice thing about having Arrakis agents is a lot of these things on the map, they have an option, like you could do a crash shuttle and gain a bit of money, or you can send your agents to it, and after a certain amount of days, you get a boost to your technology. Now, I like the idea of, of getting technology boosts, particularly because we could get survival training, right? Just all these little things, they add up together and are things that you need to be thinking about. These little subtleties. The one downside of playing at a high speed is that the, the sound effects of battle are turned off. All right, let's go ahead and capture another village. Seems quite good to me. And I think it might be good to add another musketeer here to my group, just to add a little bit more DPS. We've investigated this point of interest. Let's go ahead and pick up that little bit of money. I'm going to grab myself, do I want another wholesale market? I mean, this place produces Solari per statecraft building. So if I built a masterpiece here, this would count as two buildings for this village trait, which would mean it would be six Solari. So that would be six Solari. So let's build that masterpiece. And then maybe I could get a couple of research hubs in here and do some fun stuff. Raggio, we captured a new village. So the natural thing to do is to get your militia into it. Now, this village in particular, I am going to pop down. I am going to pop down a recruitment office to get a little bit more manpower because we're starting to use our manpower. Not a huge amount, but it is happening. We are using up some of that manpower. Looks like we've got a raid detected over here. I'm going to go ahead and send a Thunder Musketeer to defend Grimda. I don't think my other troops are going to get there in time, so I'll just keep them expanding. Uh, let's finally go take on O Alalon. So we're under attack. It looks like it's just a single raider. So we should be able to handle this with the militia that we've recruited. This is why you recruit militia. But this also tells me that there's a siege over here. And we do want to make friends with sieges because there's a special mission modifier where you get bonuses for allying siege. Sieges. We have another agent. This one I'm, I'm again going to assign to Arrakis because I want to get to level 2 authority or level two information with Arrakis. And I also like having lots of authority because again, this is an expansion map where we're going to need a lot of authority to continue to expand. And I think because again, this is such an expansion heavy map when it comes to the advanced outpost, I think it would be interesting to build the administration hall. It does cost 10 Solari to upkeep, 1000 Solari to build and 500 Plascrete. It does, however, give me three Solari per village and a 30% authority production boost. If I build it in this single slot, I would get a 20% reduction in the cost of econ economic developments, or I could put it into this slot and get a 30 Solari production boost, which kind of appeals to me if I then go for the Mason Guild, which would give me 15 Solari and fully built villages. And that money, that level of money, means I can play really heavy with authority. So I think I am going to go for the administration hall. The whole build is starting to kind of come together in a really interesting way. Let's go ahead and annex this village as well. Let's go for composite materials. This will increase my plast creep production by 10. And it will also lead me to artistic aspirations, which will give me 100 salary every time I build a masterpiece, as well as a 50% cost reduction to add building slots and access to that mason guild building I was just talking about. So this is the direction we want to go, I think. It's the direction that feels right. Something that I'm missing is a plast creep factory. So I do need 
need to increase my Plast Creek production. That will start to eat into my Solari production. I think Grimda over here is a good place to build a Plast Creek factory. It does use up to water and cost 20 Solari, but I think it's worth doing. In the village of O'Alon, I absolutely think it's time that I built an airfield. This airfield will effectively make my empire smaller, allowing me to move troops from one end of my empire to the other more easily. And I'm gonna pop it right here so that it covers both the city of Pelnit and the city of Oalon. Then I'll go ahead and recruit three militia to guard the city. I'm going for the cheapest recruitable militia. Like, I could go for ranged militia or demolition militia or heavy militia, but if I just fill it with regular militia, I think it'll be fine. Now, I don't want to capture the city of Zay San, but run in over here, I definitely want to grab. So there's going to be quite a bit of walking through things. Although in this particular mission, it just turns out there's no sandworm. It's kind of an interesting thing. It's finally time for a Landsrad council vote. So on a regular cooldown, uh, a political council is called and you have to you know vote on a variety of things and based on whether or not you've been honorable or dishonorable you're going to have more or less votes based on how much influence you're generating you're going to have more or less votes and you're never really ever going to have enough resources to completely control everything because there's also an independent minor house vote that kind of represents a little bit of rng in the game so somehow shiro games made world councils in a 4x game an RTS Forex game, kind of somewhat interesting. Infrastructure control feels quite good. That 50% building slot cost reduction is quite good. However, if we were to push for a scientific congress, we would not only get a military development speed completion of 50%, we would also get 10 Landsrad standing, which would allow us to build up to being in high standing with the Landsrad. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a single vote in favor of this. I don't care if it passes, but I, I'm not invested in the outcome, but I would like it to pass. That's how I'll phrase that. However, I really want to have infrastructure control. So I'm going to put all my votes. So those are my free votes, okay? This 90 and 10 will cost me nothing. And that's because I have 100 Landsrad votes. To vote any more votes, I'll have to spend influence. So you can see the color changes to blue effectively saying that I'm now spending a real resource to win this. I'm going to put 100 votes into this to win. And then I'll put an extra 20 in here to put this up to 30 to win. And then I would like it if I won this authority production thing, but I'm not going to bother voting for this. I think maybe more because we already have really good authority right now. So maybe I'd rather vote for these two and uh, sort of play for the long game. That's my goal. So five days from now, we'll know the outcome of that vote. And over the course of this, you can kind of change your votes. You can pick different outcomes. We're going to go ahead and grab that military resolution which will get us almost finished survival training. So something you need to know about how tech works in the game, the more tech you have, like the more tech you have researched, the more expensive your tech becomes. So you do have to kind of pick and choose a little bit carefully. That's an important thing to do. We are shredding this militia. It is it is painful. Um, these poor militia are getting absolutely obliterated. So when we annex this, this should become a sanctuary based on the rules of the game, as far as I understand them. But the awesome thing is we're going to get access to some rare elements and there's really good wind strength in here too. We also have a settled high reg. We could get a bunch of intel by investigating this. Ooh, revealing a siege, that seems really good. I'm going to reveal a siege because that'll give me good resources. And where's my other musketeer? There you are. So I have a musketeer kind of wandering around protecting the land, doing what he should do. We have completed composite materials, but this will slightly increase our Plascrete production, so we have enough money to keep, you know, producing. We finished the Plascrete factory over here in Grimda, which will give us another 10 Plascrete production per day. And now we, now we need to start buying building slots to make that work. But my hope is that I will win the infrastructure treaty here and get a 50% discount on that. So if I do decide to do that, it'll be fine. Aha, okay, so if we pop down here, you can see Zaysan has become a sanctuary, which can no longer be attacked by other players. I gain plus one authority and all of the villages that are adjacent gain plus one instance of their villages traits. So if I pop over here, you can see the scientists um, of Kafka are producing 40% more because this is getting instanced twice. So if I were to build a research hub here, we would get 1.4 knowledge instead of one, when it, normally this village would make 1.2. Uh, and then add on top of that, that we're getting extra Solari production per statecraft building. Oh, super, super good. So I think we could actually just throw down three research hubs here, which kind of appeals to me in like an interesting way. But this is just like such a good tech spot. So that's pushing in that direction. And now I'm making enough inf uh, authority that I'm going to go ahead and dip down how much authority I'm stockpiling and sell just a little bit more to keep my money income high. That won't be fully necessary once we have run in up and running. Kind of a funny statement right there. We have also hit 5,000 hedge money, which is like your score. And that means 
we can turn a single village into a garden resort. Now, garden resorts are interesting. We'll talk about those once we have a moment to talk about them. But we can also name one of our units as a champion, which raises, uh, which gives us hedge money when they kill other factions. So if I pop down here and I look at this knight right here, in theory, oh, he's already a champion. Okay, so he gets plus 200 health, plus 2 power, plus 2 armor, cannot be executed. And every time he kills a unit, he gains 100 hedge money until this champion dies. So he basically is like a walking piñata of score. Uh, we can also turn this... Uh, squire into a champion if we really want to. I don't think I don't think we want to. Let's make sure we do the basics, right? Recruit militia to fill this out. That's for sure. Then we're going to come in here and I really want to build there's a building here. This, the processing plant. So we're going to have to wait for a little bit of plascrete. This will get me 20 solari production, so I'll place that. However, if I get one production building of each type, this village will get a 20% resource production bonus, but because it's adjacent to Zaysan, it will get that twice because it's a 40% production bonus. And dun, 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 I could turn this into a garden resort, which would give you plus two knowledge production per adjacent sanctuary and plus 0 0.5 influence production per masterpiece in this region and its neighbors cannot be abandoned. And attacking this village costs 100 lands of outstanding and authority. So I like the idea of creating another garden village. And since I had planned to turn Adfir into a sanctuary, I'm kind of tempted to turn Kafka into a... I'm kind of tempted to turn Kafka into a garden resort, and I will do that. Now, this is going to cost me a little bit of water, but that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll make our way through that. Let's go ahead and send our troops over to Sinmer. We would like to capture Sinmer, so we'll start moving over here. But you can see the garden resort. Look at the plants appearing. There's all these beautiful things. We can still build in here. It produces knowledge. It produces influence. We're just getting all those beautiful resources. You know what? Let's, let's just pump whatever votes we have left into the Imperial propaganda. Let's see if we can get that. And I think it would be good for me to recruit another squire or two. Ooh, no, they cost a lot of manpower. Let me cancel that. I don't quite have the manpower to do that. So there's a Landsrad thing. Okay, House of Trades won both of these. House of Trades tends to win a lot of these because they have a lot of extra votes. Um, they got lucky with the Minor House votes too. Yeah, they got really lucky with the Minor House votes. But we did manage to pass Scientific Congress and gain a little bit of Landsrad standing. So House Harkonnen tends to be the faction that does the best in this sector. So you can usually only beat them in one place unless you've really dedicated resources towards influence production. So just do keep that in mind that in order to fight them, you're going to need a lot of influence because they tend to do really well there. So we're definitely going to be going into conflict with the with the smugglers here because they're capturing a village that we want to control. And we're going to go ahead and capture Sinmer. I don't mind being in conflict with these guys. I'm totally cool with that. Does not bother me, but I do want to capture Sinmer, particularly because there is a Plascrete mineral here, which doubles the productivity of a Plascrete factory, which would mean I could delete this Plascrete factory and get one that's way more efficient over here. Uh, we've investigated the point of interest here. We can re reveal a siege, and there is a siege here in Tadrek. So my next agent is going to be placed on this siege. Oh no, I can't do that yet. Trade four water for one manpower production. I'm going to give this siege some water so that we can slowly build up our relationship level and then eventually I want to put an agent in here until then I'm going to go ahead and put an agent on Choam no let me think about that I'm a little bit light on influence production so the Landsrad could help it would also be good to get money or manpower manpower would be really helpful so maybe I'll play with the spacing guild I have a decent amount of intel production so yeah, eventually we want to make allies with this guy. And since we just also finished development research, we could go for native artists, which would allow us to gain relation with sieges faster by building masterpieces beside the sieges. So I kind of like that. I do need to know what technology do I need to research to get access to the, um, what's it called? Let me see. Access to the wind traps. So it requires filtration systems, which is this right here. Uh, 0.2 spice production per Positive water unlocks the wind trap village building. So I do want filtration systems um, because I'm low on water right now. So that would be really helpful. And I also really want native artists. And I'm quite happy that my tech rate is going to be jumping up over time here, particularly because Kafka is a sacred garden. And speaking of which, I would like to build another research hub, but I'm a little bit light on Plascrete right now. But we'll, we'll, we'll get through all that. We'll get through all that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and annex this village. Perfect. And so the sort of early game expansion phase is starting to settle down and now we're beginning to move into the later game sort of attacking phase where we'll start beating up uh, upon our opponents and starting actually coming into conflict with people. So a raid has been spawned here towards Grimda. It looks like it's a single raider so we shouldn't have a problem dealing with that no matter where he goes. The Chome market is now open. 
We can, in theory, buy shares from Chome. There are reasons to do this. So, for example, if we get to 10%, we can recruit mercenaries. We also get two influence. If we get up to 30% Chome, we get 20% uh, military unit power and 100% maximum influence. This seems like it's quite good. So I'm going to go ahead and start buying some shares. I'm not going to go hard, like too hard on the Chome shares. But just every now and again, when I have spare money, I'm going to pop in there and grab some because you could always sell them off as well. We are low on water. I understand that. Chome market is open. We control this new village. Perfect. So in this village, I definitely want a Plascrete factory. We'll just pop it over there because it seems like a good place to put it near this thing. And I really want to capture Sabda. Now, Moondew Vale, this is a special location where buildings no consume no water. And it also gives you 1,000 hedge money. Now, an extra 1,000 hedge money would get us closer to... 10k hedge money, which would potentially get us 0.2% of our hedge money turned into salary production. So I really want to capture this. And the first 50 votes placed on each resolution would be free. So this would give us really, really par powerful control of the lands rat. I think my goal now is to move some troops over there. I'm going to send my one of my thunderers, one of my musketeers, to go pick up this crashed shuttle for the money, because money now has become a lot more valuable and a lot rarer. And then I'm going to send my troops over to capture this special location over here and also this would potentially set me up to make friends with the siege that's in this location too and also i just need more villages i need four more villages to win the game so the authority production is kind of important now i need to save up for the mason guild as well because i want that plaster production yeah i just want to be yeah yeah i want the mason guild basically is what i'm saying although in kafka i think it's really really important that we keep getting these research hubs because my goodness that 1.4 knowledge, the efficiency of knowledge in here is insane. There we go, we resolved the extra 200 money. Any more little encounters for us to do? Now I'm going to go send this musketeer to pick up this settled high reg to gain that intel. Uh, I think I will investigate this abandoned Fremen camp to reveal a siege. Want to make friends with those sieges? Sieges get sieges. Uh, let's go ahead and recruit three militia to defend Sinmer. That seems like a reasonable thing to do. Now, we haven't lost any military units, so we will potentially get the secondary objective if we com complete this mission. So you can see here, my ranged unit is in melee combat. If I just pull him back, he won't be in melee anymore, and that'll literally double his DPS. Super important to do that. We have managed to finish filtration systems, so we get spice from positive water. We don't have spice in this particular mission, so it's not important, but I can come over here to run in and pop down the really nice wind trap building. It's quite expensive to maintain. Eight salary per day it's quite expensive however this will give me plus two water per level of wind strength in the region which is 12 water considering the dew collector only gives you three this is four times more efficient at water production costs three times as much to build but only twice as much to maintain so the wind trap super efficient in regions you can build it i think in regions with at least four wind strength i think the wind trap is just an obvious choice even in th three as long as you have the Plascrete, I still think it makes sense. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and capture Yano. It'll get us closer to our victory condition. How's the Traders would like to trade? They would like to buy some Plascrete from me and they'd give me a little bit of other stuff. I'm going to go ahead and accept that deal. I'm also going to talk to House of Traders and say, how would you feel about a truce? Now, they feel actually fairly positively about a truce. And maybe I can squeeze a bit of Plascrete back off them. Yeah. So I could probably squeeze back 90 Plascrete in exchange for a truce. This will cost me a non-aggression, uh, some some influence. But we get plus five Lanzarad standing after every council while the truce is active. And it opens up the possibility for things like research agreements. All right, so we're in truce with Atreides. Maybe a research agreement could be good. Plus two base knowledge. And we can squeeze a little bit more Plascrete out of them. Uh, maybe like a little bit of their intel as well. Perfect. We would also like to get a trade agreement uh, with Atreides because we don't border them. And Atreides tend to maintain their um, Atreides tend to maintain their their trade agreements until they think you're winning, and then they go crazy on you. But the nice thing about trading with Atreides is actually none of these agreements cost us authority upkeep. Uh, whereas if we were to try to do the same thing with say the Harkonnen, it would actually cost us 10% of our authority production. Whereas we don't have that problem with the Atreides. So trading with the everyone wants to be friends with the Atreides, which is um, really good for the Atreides. We have investigated the abandoned Fremen camp. We're going to go ahead and reveal a siege. We found one over here and we found one over here. Perfect. There is another abandoned Fremen camp. I'm going to go ahead and investigate that to reveal more sieges. Oh, they actually turned down my research agreement. Let's see if I can just get Plascrete off them. Maybe then they'll take it. Oh, they turned it down. Let me let me see if I can get like just a, a scooch of Plascrete, like that much. Well, he really does not want a research agreement. Maybe he perceives me as a threat. Okay, we're going to resolve this to get some intel. We can only store a thousand intel. I say it only. 
So Atreides is declining. We control the new village. First things first, we always recruit militia. This village does have a Plascrete factory location. So in the interest of making ourselves extremely good on Plascrete, I'm going to go ahead and build a Plascrete right there. Oh, and it's industrious, so we can do double Plascrete factory here. I think it's time we deleted this Plascrete factory because it's inefficient. So demolish that building, we'll get back 20 Solari. I mean, it's not a terrible building. It's just inefficient compared to the ones that we're building. And you always want your things to be efficient. There is a new Landsrad council coming soon. Solari upkeep. Ooh, all factions lose Landsrad, Landsrad standing. This is actually good for me because I have good passive Landsrad gain uh, because I have a truce. We managed to grab our wind trap in here. That's giving us 12 water per day. Now this does have sieges in it. And we also want to build one resource production building of each type. So let's pop in here. And I think I'll build a military masterpiece. I think that's a reasonable thing to do because my hope is that these masterpieces will increase the rate at which we make friends with the Fremen. And we're making friends reasonably. We're also going to talk to this siege and we're going to trade them for water for 10 Solari. These are not really good trades, but the really good part is the fact that we're building the relationship. Um, let's see here. 10 Solari per controlled special region. Cultural tourism gives Solari and water from sanctuaries it would also unlock the trade treaty which would be a great way for us to get more money and pump more authority potentially in fact can i get away with pumping authority not really i need to have a little bit of authority being traded in the thing is landsrad guards are really really powerful so i'm just going to go ahead and all in vote um oh this would give it to all factions i kind of don't want this to go through i don't Ooh, if we vote for the smugglers on this we would actually gain a lot of money i don't think i care about that I would just rather not lose land, Landsrad standing. So I'm going to vote mostly in favor of this with just my free votes and see if we can kind of like push that towards the decline. We are heavily exploring. We now have a border with the Harkonnens, um, which is not ideal. I would maybe like to take over Oddmoor and place a... How much would it cost? 52. We could be ready to take that actually in a day or two. So let's go ahead and send the troops in. All right, I've got a ranger out here. Oh yeah, I really want that 500 Solari. So I'm going to send him to capture this and then send him home. We're in combat here. This should be a fairly easy combat. We do have a champion knight very very doable we've investigated the point of interest over here we're finding another siege um, and we will oh this is a hostile siege so we can't actually trade with it the only thing we can do is clear it out at least i think so we're going to add a building slot to this village and then we need a blue building so 4.2 intel production 1.4 knowledge the intel production could be really good Ooh, also investment office would double the village would add another instance of the village's traits which could theoretically lead to really good outcomes here because then we would get 60% resource production when the village has a one building of each type. And then if we built a if we built a data center or even a crafts workshop, this thing would pay for itself over time. Yeah, I think the thing to I think the thing to build right now is a data center because that's 4.2 intel per day is really powerful and it will activate this village's traits. Um, seems pretty good. We are now sieging Oddmer. We're going to capture it, which brings us up to eight. Eight of the ten villages we need to control to win this mission. All right, there is the money coming through, an extra 500 cash. Let's pop up to Chome. How's the price looking over the last 260? Prices increase slowly. Let's buy some shares, and I'll buy another set of shares in a moment. When the cooldown is clear, boom, we're up to 6%. We would like to get to 10% for that influence. Uh, let's pop in an unassigned agent. We could use either the Landsrad or Chome because there's a few um, few missions here that would be nice to, to get control of. Um, I think I'm going to put him into Chome because I'm a little bit light on cash right now. So, boom, get me that Chome control. I really need control of Sabda. In Odmer, we'll grab ourselves an airfield because it'll because this airfield can cover three villages easily. So we'll be much more mobile. There are some interesting things here. We can get a temporary ornithopter. I think I'm just going to take the intel. And then we can get manpower or a couple marauders. I think I would take the marauders later. Uh, but the interesting thing is we also do have two energy sources inside our empire. If we decide to go for late game military units that use energy, like the monument here. It takes 10 fuel cells to use it, or the siren, which uses three. It also requires us to make friends with the spacing guild. So things to consider. The war banner also takes fuel. There's also things you can do with fuel. I think um, something... There's things you can do with fuel cells based on certain things that you have, if you have excess fuel. Let's see if the Atreides will take my research agreement. I kind of like the idea. They did. They accepted it. So now we get a plus two base knowledge, plus a 20% bonus to research speed for developments already developed by the other faction. All right, into Kafka. I think we're going to save Planscrete to build the Mason Guild. And the Landsrad 
results are in. Looks like the witnesses pass, so everyone gets Landsrad guards. 50% Solari upkeep reduction on House of Trades, and nobody loses Landsrad standing. I'm going to send these Landsrad guys down to Arano. This sort of a direction, if we could grab Arano, that would be amazing. We only need two more villages, so a little bit of authority is all we need to uh, get control of this planet, or well, this sector of the planet, rather. We just finished cultural tourism, so maybe a trade treaty with them would be good. Could also be good. Ooh, yeah, 50% research speed boost from research agreement. Outpost logistics feels right. Feels right to me. And then maybe if we can go into Manichaean propaganda, that would give us militia slots, as well as the prideful crown. This would lower the authority cost of annexing regions near our garden resort. So we get a recruitment center for a lot of manpower, research center for a lot of research. The research center feels kind of right to me, actually. The Museum of Unbound Arts can build a second copy of every masterpiece in every village. Each allied village with at least three masterpieces gain one instance of the village's traits. Man, there's kind of an interesting gameplay mechanic here that I want to explore. I think the first things first is to get the Mason Guild. Let me start finishing some of these villages, particularly Runin. Runin is basically ready to be finished. It just needs one more building um, because I think five buildings is the normal limit for most players aside from House Corino, who can do six quite easily. Okay, we got a promising politician. So for a thousand salary, we can gain 10 lands route standing or we can spend thing to gain political mastermind. I think spending the money for lands route standing is fine. Especially because we're going to be making quite a bit more money as time goes on. I'm going to send my Landsrad guards over here to take over Mimwahad. It would be nice to have control of this because that would basically lock off Arano for me. And then I could conquer Arano whenever I want. So new Chome shares have been issued. Looks like they've increased the amount of that are available on the market. Which typically means the price goes down. So we can start buying maximum amounts of Chome shares for super cheap right now. As the price plummets down. And then it will climb back up. So we managed to grab ourselves. We almost have that 10%. So we do want to get a few more. Outpost Logistics is finished. Let's say, would you like the trade agreement? How do you feel about that? You give me a little bit of money on top. Let's see. They declined the trade agreement. So they don't like the trade agreement. Ongoing siege. We capture the second to last village for this mission. Lovely. Using our temporary troops. And then I'm going to airlift my non-temporary troops in position to capture Arano. So these guys have just been airlifted. Troop transports will fly in from space. They will get picked up. These troops are completely unavailable until they land. I cannot change their order. So moving troops around long distances in the Dune Spice Wars is actually quite a strategic decision. You have to be very careful. Let's go ahead and pop down one, two, three new militias in this new town. Um, this is a Plascrete location too. Ooh, Landsrad standing here. If we've saved this crashed spaceship, let's send a Landsrad guard down there to do that. And uh, we'll retrieve the flight records of this crashed ornithopter to gain intel. So once we have 56 authority, that's a wrap. Um, we did escape Manichaean propaganda. Nice. We're working on Prideful Crown as well. Uh, the, the, the village of Runin is going to be upgraded now to level 5. And we want to build probably a masterwork in here to make friends with the siege. Do collector seems pointless. We could also go for the maintenance office. The problem is, I guess it would maintain this place. I don't know. What's the upkeep like here? I haven't even, I haven't even really done much building, honestly. It would be nice to build a masterpiece, though. Yeah, let's build the investment office. Let's keep that money flowing. A lot of nice resources in here. We may as well keep it going. A new council is coming. I don't think the council matters. I think we've managed to passively win this game. As long as nobody invades me and takes me out, I think we have managed to very quickly and very easily conquer this uh, zone. We'll grab that 11 Landsrad rating. Landsrad rating is quite a rare and difficult commodity to acquire, so it's always good to grab it. All right, let's go for Arano. It's time to conquer them. We're just about ready. Um, I will prepare a supply drop and a scavenger team. They'll take a little bit of time to prepare, but they do allow me to restore the health and capabilities of my troops. I want this ranger to fall back. Because he was taking a little bit too much damage. A little bit of micro goes a long way in Dune Spice Wars. It's kind of like part of the reason I love this game so much. Is that like the actual... I'm like, remember, I'm playing at 2x speed. So if I was playing on normal speed, you have plenty of time to move your troops around. You could go look at this. I can be like, okay, I want to make this decision. Then I can pop back and be like, okay, what's going on here? All right, we've conquered that village. All right, I'll go ahead and do the annexation. That'll take a few days. Then I can pop up here. I'll buy some Chome shares. Now I've got the 10% thing that gives me plus two influence. I can also recruit mercenaries. Mercenaries are fairly expensive. However, they're temporary. They disband after 20 days and they never recover health. You can also recruit more militia. The Landsrad Council vote is activated, but you can take your time because like time normally flows really slowly. Like none of these things are urgent in the sense that like you don't have to get to them immediately. Uh, let's grab valuable trinkets so we get more resources from trading with sieges. I haven't even allied a siege, but I am about to win the game because I'm about to have 10 
10 villages. Uh, and keep in mind, we're playing on medium difficulty. I'm a relatively experienced player talking you through playing a new faction. So I wanted to play on medium because I feel like that's a pretty good, pretty good level to play on. And there you go. Boom. We won the mission. Uh, and this is mission one of our overarching campaign. So if we check out the summary now, you can see it took me about 30 minutes of game time. We had the highest hegemony. We had the most chome shares. We killed the most units. We had pretty damn good development. I'm surprised by that considering I thought I was relatively ahead on knowledge, but I guess I wasn't. I guess I was just on pace with the AI. In terms of economy, I was pretty good with Sol Solari. I was kind of middle of the pack for Solari stocks. I definitely was ahead on chome shares and I was fairly ahead on territory, but I built my strategy around capturing territory. I had the most lands were outstanding. I had reasonable influence production. I had reasonable intel production. And because I had such a powerful early game military, I never really needed to build military and no one ever had enough military to kind of take me out because I had, you know, defender's advantage in that. So starting off with military units actually gives you such a huge advantage, I feel, that it was super worth it for me to take that. Um, yeah, this was a sponsored video. I would like to finish this campaign. I would actually like to do like another mission or two. So we win. Now we gain sovereignty over the Pasty Mesa. We gain three development assets. Pressure regresses by 5%. Now, our Fremen relationship did not go up because we did not like really work the sieges at all. But we now we get to choose a bonus. So 10% Intel production or 10% Solari. From, I think starting every mission with the first development of each tree, that's insanely powerful. So I think I just take that super, super powerful ability is going to make me do a lot better in all these future missions. But you can also see the other players, they have captured territory as well. And the Akazi territory here, this pasty mesa gives me plus two authority passively and i can also activate improvements in here so i could get plascrete facilities and this will give me plus five plascrete in all of my other missions or plus three water in all of my other missions or plus 10 money in all of my other missions i like the money money seems good so let's take that plus 10 solari production it's a lot of money over the course of a of a campaign and now we pick a new mission but we will be doing that in the next episode of this series, if I do in fact have time to do a full series on this. And I really hope that I do, because I really enjoy doing Spice Wars, which is why I'm so happy to be sponsored to play it. Don't forget to check out the link in the description. Do all that stuff. Thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time.